I never wanted to move to Maple Street. I liked our old house with its sunny windows and cozy rooms. But my parents said we had to move because of Dad's new job. They said it was a great opportunity for him and that we would love the new house. They said it was a bargain, a beautiful Victorian house with a big backyard and a lot of character. They were wrong. The house on Maple Street was anything but beautiful. It was old and creepy, with peeling paint and creaky floors. The backyard was overgrown with weeds and dead trees. The house had a lot of character, all right. A lot of bad character. We moved in on a rainy day in October. As soon as we stepped inside, I felt a cold chill run down my spine. I looked around and saw dark shadows in the corners, cobwebs on the ceiling, and dust everywhere. The house smelled like mold and decay. I hated it. My parents tried to cheer me up. They said it was just a fixer-upper and that we would make it our home in no time. They said it had a lot of potential and that we would have fun decorating it. They said it was an adventure and that we would make new friends in the neighborhood. They were wrong. The house on Maple Street was not a fixer-upper. It was a nightmare. No matter how much we cleaned and painted and repaired, it never looked any better. It always looked like a haunted house. And it was. We soon realized that we were not alone in the house. There were other things living there. Things that we could not see, but we could feel. Things that made noises in the night, that moved things around, that touched us when we slept. Things that whispered in our ears, that showed us visions, that made us do things we did not want to do. The house on Maple Street was haunted, and it wanted us out. At first, the hauntings were subtle. We would hear footsteps in the attic or doors slamming by themselves. We would find objects misplaced or lights flickering on and off. We would feel cold spots or breezes in closed rooms. We would hear voices or laughter or crying. My parents tried to ignore it. They said it was just the house settling or the wind or our imagination. They said it was nothing to worry about and that we would get used to it. They said it was harmless and that we should not be afraid. They were wrong. The hauntings became more intense. We would see apparitions or shadows or glowing eyes. We would feel hands grabbing us or pushing us or scratching us. We would smell blood or fire or rot. We would hear screams or gunshots or curses. My parents tried to explain it. They said it was just a trick of the light or a reflection, or a hallucination. They said it was a result of stress, or fatigue, or illness. They said it was a coincidence, or a prank, or a hoax. They were wrong. The hauntings became more violent. We would be attacked, or thrown, or choked. We would be cut, or burned, or bruised. We would be possessed, or tormented, or driven insane. My parents tried to stop it. They said it was time to leave, or to call for help, or to fight back. They said it was a mistake, or a curse, or a challenge. They were too late. The house on Maple Street had a dark past. It had been the site of many tragedies, many crimes, many deaths. It had been the home of many evil people, many wicked deeds, many dark secrets. It had been the prison of many restless souls many angry spirits, many vengeful ghosts. The house on Maple Street had a dark plan. It had lured us in with its low price and its false charm. It had isolated us from our friends and our family and our neighbors. It had trapped us in its walls and its rooms and its history. The house on Maple Street had a dark purpose. It wanted to add us to its collection, to its legacy, to its power. It wanted to consume us, our bodies and our minds and our souls. It wanted to destroy us, our lives and our hopes and our dreams. The house on Maple Street succeeded. I am the last one alive. The last one left. The last one to tell the story. My name is Emily Peterson. I am 12 years old. I live in the house on Maple Street. And I am not alone. I don't know how long I've been here. Time has no meaning in this house. 
It's always dark, always cold, always silent, except for the noises. The noises that come from the house, the noises that come from the ghosts. They are everywhere, in every room, in every corner, in every mirror. They are the ones who lived here before us, the ones who died here, the ones who haunt here. They are not friendly. They are not kind. They are not human. They are angry. They are hateful. They are evil. They want me to join them, to be one of them, to be dead. They have tried everything. They have scared me, hurt me, tortured me. They have shown me things, horrible things, things that happened in this house, things that they did, things that they want me to do. They have taken everything from me, my family, my friends, my happiness. They have left me with nothing, nothing but fear, pain, and despair. They have broken me, but they have not killed me, not yet. They are waiting, waiting for something. Something that will make them stronger. Something that will make me weaker. Something that will end it all. I don't know what it is, but I know it's coming. Soon. I have no hope. No escape. No choice. I have only one thing left. One thing that they can't take from me. One thing that keeps me alive. My story. This is my story. The story of the house on Maple Street. The story of the Peterson family. The story of me. I don't know if anyone will ever read this. I don't know if anyone will ever find this. I don't know if anyone will ever care. But I have to write it. I have to tell it. I have to finish it. Before they finish me. This is the end of the story. Or maybe the beginning. The beginning of the end. I'm Jessica, and this is the story of how I lost everything I ever loved. It all started when my husband James and I found our dream home, a beautiful Victorian house in the countryside. We were so happy and excited to move in, even though the locals warned us about its dark past. We didn't believe in ghosts or curses, we just wanted to start our new life together. But we were wrong. So very wrong. From the moment we stepped inside, we felt a cold and sinister presence that never left us alone. Doors would slam shut behind us, shadows would move across the walls, and whispers would fill the air at night. We tried to ignore it, to rationalize it, to find a logical explanation. But there was none. The house was haunted, and it wanted us out. We decided to investigate the history of the house, hoping to find a way to appease the spirits. We learned that the house belonged to a family that suffered a terrible fate. The father was a cruel and abusive man who cheated on his wife and tormented his children. One night, he killed his wife in a fit of rage and then set the house on fire, killing himself and his children. The only survivor was the youngest daughter who escaped through a window. She was later found by the police, covered in blood and burns, and muttering about the voices in the house. We realized that the house was a prison for the souls of the family, who were trapped in an endless cycle of pain and anger. They blamed us for living in their home, for disturbing their peace, for being happy. They wanted us to suffer as they did, to feel their wrath, to join them in death. We tried to escape, to leave the house and never look back. But it was too late. The house had a hold on us, and it wouldn't let us go. It locked the doors, cut the phone lines, and sabotaged the car. It unleashed its full fury on us, throwing objects, breaking windows, and setting fires. It attacked us physically and mentally, hurting our bodies and breaking our minds. James was the first to go. He was dragged into the basement by an invisible force and I heard his screams as he was tortured and killed. I was too scared to help him, too paralyzed to move. I hid in the bedroom, hoping it would end, praying for a miracle. But there was no miracle. There was only horror. The house came for me next, and I knew I had no chance. I grabbed a knife and stabbed myself in the heart, hoping to end my suffering. But it didn't work. I didn't die. I just felt more pain, 
more agony, more despair. The house kept me alive, but not for long. It wanted me to suffer more, to feel its vengeance, to witness its power. It showed me visions of the past, of the family that lived and died here, of the horrors they endured and inflicted. It made me relive their memories, their emotions, their nightmares. It made me one of them. And now, I'm stuck here, in this hell, with no hope, no escape, no peace. I'm a ghost, a shadow, an echo of the past. I haunt this house, and I haunt you, dear listener. Because you are the reason I'm telling you this story. You are the reason I'm reaching out to you. You are the reason I'm here. You see, this house is not just a house. It's a portal, a gateway, a bridge between worlds. And this podcast is not just a podcast. It's a signal, a message, a call. A call for you, dear listener. A call for you to come to this house, to see it for yourself, to experience it for yourself. A call for you to join me, to join us, to join the echoes of the past. You see, this house is not just a house. It's a trap, a snare, a lure. And this podcast is not just a podcast. It's a bait, a hook, a line. A line that connects you to me, to us, to the echoes of the past. The more you listen, the more you hear, the more you feel, the more you get drawn in. The more you get drawn in, the more you want to know, the more you want to see, the more you want to come. The more you want to come, the more you get closer, the more you get closer, the more you get in danger. Because this house is waiting for you, dear listener. It's waiting for you to cross the threshold, to enter the door, to step inside. It's waiting for you to become its next victim, its next prisoner, its next echo. And we are waiting for you too, dear listener. We are waiting for you to join our family, to share our pain, to feel our wrath. We are waiting for you to scream, to bleed, to die. So, what are you waiting for, dear listener? Don't you want to know the rest of the story? Don't you want to see the house for yourself? Don't you want to meet me, to meet us, to meet the echoes of the past? Come on, dear listener. Come to this house. Come to this podcast. Come to this story. Come to your doom.